Okay, hold it. Fine. All right, Rose, that'll do for tonight. I got some business I got to take care of tonight. Private. I'm looking for Henry Pooley. You found him. My name is Frank Otto. Mean anything to you? Mm -hmm. Should it? About 200 bucks. That's what you took my sister for with this phony modeling course. Now, wait a minute, mister. Let's take it a little easy how we talk. That word phony now, I don't like it. And I don't like my sister being taken. So I just dropped by to pick up the 200. You're crazy. We did our part. We trained her to stop falling over her feet, and we filed copies of her pictures with every top agency. Sometimes it takes a little time to get... That's what you told her six months ago. And in all that time, she's just been sitting around waiting. All hopped up, she's gonna be a model. You got her so mixed up, she doesn't know what she's doing. Your sister's your problem, mister. Right now, I'm busy. I'm expecting some people in. A 200, let's have it. Be smart, mister. Get out of here before I call the police. Better make it an ambulance, it'll do you more good. Now get up my money. Do I get my money or don't I? Selling, honey. We're buying. Come on in. I'm not selling anything, Mr. Hammer. I've come here to hire you. Well, that can be arranged, too. Come on, sit down. Now then. Hmm. What can I do for you? Oh, it's not for me. It's for my... For my brother. Oh, Mr. Hammer, you've just got to help me. I'm so miserable. Come on, now, honey, take it easy, take it easy. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad now. It's all my fault. Come on, she, she's just blow your nose a little there. That's right. I suppose we start at the beginning, huh? Looks like just what's your name? Mary Otto. My brother is Frank Otto. Huh? Well, he's in terrible trouble. Haven't you read the afternoon paper? Oh, yeah, huh? Yeah, well, here. Story on the front page. We seek young man reported the elevator. This young man, is this your brother? But he didn't kill him, Mr. Hammer. He did give him a beating, but he didn't kill him. Uh-huh. Where's your brother now? Well, are you going to help us? Nope, not unless he helps himself by giving himself up. Oh, but he can't do that. Sorry, he... honey, it's the only way I'll touch it. If he's innocent of killing this poly, we'll find out. I guess we have no choice. Okay. 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 Now, you say he gave this poly a beating. Why? Because of what they did to me. I guess some of it was my fault. But they shouldn't have kept getting my hopes up. I believed what they said. Well, well, well what did they say? That I was beautiful. In no time at all, they were going to make me a top model and famous. Now I know all they wanted was my money. Well, if it's any consolation, honey, there are hundreds of girls all the way across the country who fall for that line every day. Oh, but I was so sure. Well, I wouldn't even take a job. I just kept living off of Frank. And now he's going to be arrested for murder. And it's all my fault. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, honey. Being arrested and being convicted are two different things. But you're sure that he didn't kill this bully? Oh, no. Frank was crazy mad over what they did to me. But he's no killer. And besides, Polly was alive when he left. How do you know that? Well, because when Frank was going out the door, Polly called after him that he'd get somebody to take care of Frank. Huh? It says here the filing cabinet was ransacked. What did your brother take? Nothing. No? Well, that means that somebody must have been there after he left. That's it. Polly was trying to get rid of Frank because he said he was expecting somebody else. Mm hmm. 
Okay, you go find your kid brother and take care of your end of the deal. I'll try and find the person who uh, finished the job that he started. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Traditionally, 42nd Street and Broadway is the gateway to a world of glamour. Actually, it's a street living in the past. Its once famous theaters, which housed the Ziegfeld Follies and George White's scandals, have been transformed into second-run houses. Its restaurants into Frankfurter and orange juice stands, its cabarets into penny arcades. But to the glamour-struck youngster, it wasn't a tired-out old street with little to remind it of its past glory. It was still a street touch with stardust. So it was here that phony talent agencies and modeling schools drew their prospects. Church, may I help you? Yeah, my name's Mike Hammer. I'd uh, like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Not so fast. I didn't get a chance to read your pretty little papers. Ah, I see. Private detective. No official standing. <laughs> yeah, no official standing. Well, in that case, I'm afraid I'm much too busy. Well, it just might pay you to take the time. I'm sorry. Yeah, you see, I was hired by one of your former pupils who thinks your modeling course is a gym. That's ridiculous. Maybe. That's too bad. You know, I was hoping that we could uh, avoid a lot of bad publicity if you'd have been cooperative, but... This, uh, this ex-pupil, uh, what is her name? What difference does it make? Huh? Well, uh, it just might convince me that you actually have a client. Mary Otto. Oh, yes, yes, I remember her, yes. We, we never should have taken her. She didn't have the qualifications. Yeah, when you were right the first was... time, honey, you, uh, you should never have taken her 200 clams. Mr. Hammer, this organization is a legitimate modeling school. Each student receives her training, plus a complete series of poses. Uh -huh. Now, these pictures are then placed with the various agencies. Uh -huh. How many jobs would you say have resulted from these uh, poses? Well, we're not an employment agency. We do our job. If the agencies can't find use for the girls, that's not our fault. Uh-huh, I see. Somebody had taught this little number that if you don't say anything, it can't be held against you. According to her, she knew nothing and told less. I was just getting ready to swing the conversation to Henry Poley when an unexpected phone call interrupted. Career Modeling School, Miss Church speaking. Oh, I see. You're sure that was the name? Mr. Hammer, I'd advise you to get out of here and not to come back. In case you're interested, that was the police. Oh? A man just gave himself up for the killing of Henry Poley here last night. You, uh, read about it, of course? Well, yeah, I seem to, uh, remember having heard about it. I'll bet. The man who gave himself up was named Otto. Now, that's quite a coincidence, isn't it? Isn't that great? You know, that's the first time any one of my clients has ever taken my advice that fast. I don't know what you're up to, Mr. Hammer, but if you're trying to build up a defense for this killer... I'll do more than that, honey. I'm going to find the real killer. Oh, uh... By the way, would you answer one question? I see no reason why I should. Well, the newspapers said that your files have been ransacked. Do you have any idea of what's missing? Only Mr. Poley could tell you that, and he's dead. <laughs> That's right. Well, if he is, and he's got a big yacht coming, because they're going to bury him in the morning. Mike. Mary, I, uh, I see your brother gave himself up. You are going to be able to help Frank, aren't you, Mike? Well, if he didn't kill Poley, and I don't think he did, I think I might be able to. Now, look, I want your brother to give out a statement to the press for publication. Well, what about? Well, I want him to say that... He is innocent of killing Polly, that he saw Polly alive when he left, and that uh, let him infer that he saw the person who had a later date with Polly. Oh, but he didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most important of all, I want him to say that he has hired me to find the real murder. Now, you got that? One. He didn't kill Polly. Right. Two. He saw the next visitor. Three. You're going to find the real murderer. Right. I'll call the attorney right now. Here you are. Come on. Oh. 
construct knows on sidewalk. George Street. And then it... Hammer. Mr. Hammer, I have to see you. About this story in today's paper. Yeah, what about it? This boy they have in jail. He didn't kill Polly. I can prove it. When can I see you? Immediately. I'm Elsa Weber. My address is... Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Park Avenue. Okay. I'll be there as soon as I can. Mr. Hammer? Yes, Mrs. Weber? Come in. It was good of you to come. Oh, you made it hard to resist. Would you please sit down? Yes, of course. Mr. Hammer, I'm placing myself entirely in your hands. What I'm about to tell you might ruin me socially. Worse than that, I'm worried about what it might do to my husband. Oh, he wouldn't understand. Huh? He would. He's a fine man. But the company he works for is very conservative, very staid. Even a hint of scandal. Oh, I see. But yet you called me. A man is being accused of a murder I know he didn't commit. I, I can't keep quiet and let that happen. Now, well, you're quite a woman, Mrs. Weber. A very frightened and foolish one, I'm afraid. Well, I'll do everything I can to see to it that you never regret what you're doing. Thank you. So? I know Frank Otto didn't kill Polly. How do you know? I saw Otto leave, and Polly was alive when he left. You're sure of that? I went in. Polly had been badly beaten. He could scarcely move, but he was alive. You see, Polly had been blackmailing me for years. With him helpless, I, I took the evidence. It's right over here. So you're the one who ransacked those filing cabinets, huh? I knew he had it hidden there somewhere. He's taunted me with it often enough. Oh. Yeah, but these aren't of you. I destroyed the ones of myself. Yeah, what about these? I want them returned to their rightful owners so they can destroy them. Well, I'll be glad to return to their rightful owners. Tell me, how'd they get their hooks into you? I didn't always have this, Mr. Hammer. Fortunately for me, I met and married Tom Weber. Before I met him, I uh, took a modeling course. Polly? <laughs> I thought it was a shortcut to stardom. I even posed for some calendar art. Well, there's nothing wrong in that. A lot of girls have. It hasn't been fatal. But as Mrs. Thomas Weber, if those pictures were ever circulated among my friends or my husband's associates, it could ruin us. All the more credit to you for coming forward. <laughs> Don't make it sound so heroic. Anybody would have done it. The killer hasn't. Polly was alive when I left. He was beginning to recover. He struggled to his feet and he came after me. What'd you do? I slammed the door behind me and ran for the stairs. Yeah, well then somebody... Somebody else must have come in after you left and finished off the job. But who? Yeah, who? Yeah. This is a... A partial list of possible suspects in the business that Polly was in. But I think I've got a way of narrowing down the field. Would you mind if I took one of these negatives along with me? I think, I think I can flush the killer out into the open with it. Mr. Hammer, I know how much misery a man like Poli can cause. If there's anything, any way I can help. Yeah, there is. You can go out of town for a couple of days. Let me have your apartment. What are you going to do? I'm going to go fishing. Go fishing? That's right, go fishing. With this as bait. The first step in setting the trap was strictly a selling job. I didn't expect it to be too hard. Well, no harder, that is, than selling the daily worker in the Union League Club. Captain Molly Hogan ran the police woman detail. Her girls are the best trained in the world, and to Molly goes the credit for it. I only wanted to borrow one of them for a couple of days, but she wasn't buying. I decided to change pace and try to sneak in a curve. If the Bureau of Police Women didn't want to cooperate, maybe she'd rather see the credit for a big collar go to a private eyeful. Well, it wasn't exactly what you'd call a sales pitch, but it wasn't what she called it either. 
Anyway, it did the job. She agreed to let me talk to one of her girls. If it was okay with the girls, it was okay with her. Mr. Hammer? Yeah? I'm Sergeant Hurley. Sergeant Hurley? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. When I think of how unpleasant that word used to sound to me when I was a PFC. Captain Mully said you had a job you needed help on, Mr. Hammond. Yeah, that's right. Look, as long as we're going to be working together, why don't you call me Mike, huh? I understood this was a voluntary assignment. Yeah, that's right. Maybe I won't take it, Mike. Oh, come on now. Look, I am not going to go through life calling any woman sergeant, particularly when I think of the synonyms we used to have for that word. I'm Marine. Good, Marine. Well, roughly what I've got in mind is I'd like you to help me flush out a killer. Has possibilities. Yeah, now, I'll do everything I can to protect you, Maureen, but it could get dangerous. With you protecting me, Mike? Ridiculous. Who's this killer supposed to have killed? He's a photographer, a guy named Poli. Someone gave himself up for that. No, 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 the kid didn't kill Poli. I found a witness who saw Poli alive after the kid left. Then why doesn't your witness come forward? Because that way we might save the kid, but we'd lose the killer. My way, we do both. Uh, what do I do? I told her all she had to know. She understood the necessity of discretion in keeping Mrs. Weber's name out of it as much as possible. We arranged to meet at my office at 11, so she could get moved into the Weber home with as little attention as possible. At the school, nobody mentioned the missing negatives. But Poli couldn't have been in this alone. So they were keeping quiet either because the negatives would be too hard to explain or because it was a small price to pay for the silence of a witness who could prove Frank Otto didn't kill Poli. But they might go into action once they found that witness had already talked. Now really, Mr. Hammer, I cannot stand for your constant bursting in and out of here. This is a school and... And what? Now, what does that mean? No, I'm interested. This is a school, and what else? I was going to say this is a school, and the girls are entitled to their lessons without constant interruptions and diversions. <laughs> yeah. You said that you don't know what was taken from that filing cabinet. Well, I just thought I'd let you know. I don't understand. Well, a friend of mine came into uh, possession of a number of these. They wouldn't be yours by any chance, would they? Hmm? Of course not. We don't go in for this sort of thing. It's odd, isn't it? If you'll notice very carefully on the photograph here, you'll see a table in the background. Would you like to compare it with that one up on the stand? This picture was taken right here in this joint, and so are all the rest of them. I know nothing about it. Mr. Poli handled all the photography, and... He's dead. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about it, honey. There's lots more where that came from. More than enough for evidence. Evidence of what? That somebody had a racket on the side? What are you going to do, Digdale? Suppose that it just wasn't on the side. Suppose that I can prove that that was this studio's main source of income. You might have to prove that. <laughs> you know, I just might do that. That's right, Buster. You play it real smart. You move your hand one inch and I'll throw it off. The only thing you're going to blow off is your mouth, Hammer. Take his gun, Bert. We've been waiting for you. Sorry we weren't neater. Looks like you got mice in your files. Rats, you mean? What do you want? You got something belonging to a friend of ours. We dropped by to pick it up. Anything belonging to a friend of yours, I wouldn't touch. <laughs> you want to be careful how you talk, Hammer. Bert's sensitive. Like I was saying, you got something belongs to a friend. We want it. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, don't go hard on us, Hammer. We got ways of reaching you. Yeah? Show him, Bert. <coughs> Very nice. I heard you were good. That's gonna make Bert mad. He gets real mean when he's mad. You're scaring me to death. All right, you searched the joint, you didn't find anything. Why don't you pick that thing up and get out of here? Maybe they're on you. Yeah, why didn't you come close enough to find out, huh? Back up. Put both hands on the back of that chair. 
Sure. Now keep walking backwards until all your weight's on your hands. Uh-huh. Where are they? Satisfied? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Maybe you think you won't tell us. You will, sooner or later. Make it sooner and make it easy on yourself. Bert used to wrestle. I called him the Strangler. What do you want to know? Where'd you get that negative? I don't know what you... A woman, a woman named, named Weber Elsa Weber. That's what I like about you hard guys. When you crack, you crack all over the place. Give him something for his nerves, Bert. You got him all upset. Come on, we have another call to make. Yeah, let's go. gets nervous when women scream, but he manages to persuade him to stop. Anybody else here? No. Who are you? What do you want? We dropped by to pick up a package. Belongs to a friend of ours named Poli. I did... We know you have it. We already checked out your friend Hammer. He told us you took Poli's negatives. I don't know any Poli. Sure you do. You were in his office the other night. Took some negatives. You're guessing. Poli called us after you left. He told us you took him. You're lying. You would have been here sooner. No. We figured it a fair exchange. You get the negatives, you keep quiet about Poli being alive after the kid left. But you talk too much. Look, I I'll give you the negatives, but... It's too late. Hammer knows you saw Poli alive after the kid left. But he can't prove it if you're not around. That's right, Buster. So... All right, Bertle, come on down. That's right. That's far enough. All right, Bertle, come here. That's it. That's far enough, right there. He's dead. Naturally. All right, Mr. Hammer, drop your gun. Or I'll have to shoot your girlfriend here. Well, 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 the chilly Miss Church. We finally fleshed you out, the real brains behind the shakedown racket. Who, me? How silly. Oh, I've known you killed Polly for quite a while, but proving it was another matter. You just done that for me, thank you very much. I had no reason to kill Polly. Oh, honey, you had plenty of reason. You needed a patsy. Polly was so hot, he was of no further use to you. You saw a chance to get rid of him, so you took it. You went down there and finished the job that Frank Otto started. You do sound convincing. Now I'll have to make sure that neither your friend here nor you tell anybody what you know. Uh, one last word, please. Uh, show them what you learned at the academy, honey. Now! Oh. Wait a minute, honey. It's... <laughs> Mike! Oh! Mike, I'm sorry. I know you were only trying to protect me. Protect you? You need protection like a Sherman tank. 